I think I'm the athlete that finished highest in the games and lowest in the Open and quarterfinals. But I'm not extremely strict. I don't measure the calories day by day. I see them as my competitors yeah, and I don't see them as the gods. Hi everyone, welcome back to another What Science video. In today's video I will have a conversation with Jelle Hoste. Jelle Hoste is an elite CrossFit athlete who burst onto the scene in this year, 2023, by placing 10th in the CrossFit Games. We will talk about how it is to train as a tall athlete, about his training schedule, if he incorporates running into his training and so on, and also about how it is to mentally prepare for something that big as a CrossFit Games. Stay tuned, and here is our conversation with Jelle Host. All right, so Jelle, uh, how are you doing? So um, what a year it has been, 2023. Um, you came in fourth at the semis, Europe, yes. correct? And then tenth at the games. As a fellow Belgian, I was really rooting for you, of course. What what changed? What all of a sudden? What made you go to the games and, and actually perform unbelievably well? I think nothing dramatically changed. Okay. I was already training good, consistent a lot. Yes. And step by step, I was improving all the small dots. Yes. Like training wise, training smarter, more, um, how would you say, more uh, conscious Deliberate. about my yes. sleep, about my food. Okay. And as a taller athlete, yes. I always told like when I make it to the games, it will be good, but I first have to make it yes. because the earlier stages are very hard for me. They are. It's not a secret that small athletes are a little bit more an advantage because yes. everything is a smaller place. It's yes. uh, and all my advantages I have as a bigger athlete. Yes, it's uh, it comes less to an uh, to fruition. Can, yeah, I cannot find the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So let's talk about that. We 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 post a, a question on Instagram like, um, yeah, what do you want to? ask the tall guy from, from Belgium and many people actually ask like how do you make it to such a high level at the yeah as a CrossFit athlete because for example we did a study um, with elite CrossFit athletes and one of the things that showed up was actually what was um, determining performance at the open I'm talking about the open mm -hmm. was not VO2 max not pure strength it was anthropometrics how mm -hmm. long your ties were and how long your arms were literally yeah. this this only very uh, variables yeah. were, were important which is interesting so um do you train accordingly for example do you focus on your strengths because you know if, if there's running i can win actually and really get a lot of points or do you also work on your weaknesses well first of all the first part of your uh, question yes i think it's true i never done very good at the open yes. you also see I think I'm the athlete that finished highest in the games and lowest in the Open and quarterfinals because I would not even have qualified this year with my quarterfinal performance because now they take the top 40. Yes. I finished 44th. Really? So it's always has been a struggle to... It's stressy. I, I, I yeah, assume. very stressy. For me, quarterfinals were more stressy than semifinals That's than the games because, uh, yeah. You know it it's going to be... be yeah. Yeah. It will be hard and it can be done, uh, it can be finished there already for me. Yes. You, you, think, you think CrossFit HQ should change something or do you think, for example, I mean, it's maybe a bit of a, a difficult question, I know, but do you think maybe they should just incorporate always a certain movement, like, for example, wall balls, like de facto, because otherwise it's just such a disadvantage for me, but for millions of other, thousands of other people? Or you think, this is it, that's how it is? I'm not sure if... Uh, I think the test is very good to take the fittest athletes, yes. because at the end, if you put a heavier barbell, if you put some high skills, yes. gymnastics exercises, it's, the elite athletes will come uh, at the top. Yes. But um, I think there is a better way to do it by example in uh, judo to qualify yes. for the olympics you have to go through several competitions every year okay at european championships you earn that amount of points at the lower level competitions you earn also points yes. but less more of a season yes more of a season and there you will see the 
real fittest guys, yes. I think. Yes. Like, I think in that format, I would have qualified earlier for the games yes. because I never qualified, I never finished the competition lower than I qualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. me, it was all the time a struggle to get in. Yes. Like the French throwdown, by example. Um, my third year of CrossFit, I qualified in RX, but that last. And then I didn't finish a workout outside the top 10 and I yes. finished second because uh, it always has been like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you see a lot of athletes where it's the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Completely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So you think that live competitions are more tailored to like overall, maybe even also taller athletes um, just because you have more yeah, things you can work with. You don't have a, a small space mm -hmm. where you what, have to do always have to do burpees and uh, snatches and so on. Probably, or I think CrossFit does a good job because not everyone has the same space to yes. train the environment. Yes. It's yes. also hard to judge yes. if you do something bigger than the box. Like running, like running, you you have to measure everything, and the measure tools has to, have to be correct and yes. calibrated. So it's, I think it's impossible to make a fair test with larger environments and more tools but it sucks being a taller, yeah, taller yeah, athlete yeah. Um, yeah yeah but you can always incorporate rowing and wall balls and then you will read out a lot of smaller athletes yeah. already because one workout out of three or four workouts is, is a lot it's a lot of points so yeah true could, true uh, true that's good. So your your training, do you incorporate a lot of running? Because it's always fascinated me that in the in the games, for example, I I mean I think you can confirm there's always quite a lot of running. Yeah. Uh, which suits you well, I guess. Uh, is it just a strength of you, or do you always focus on running? Or it all always has been a strength because I had a small period in my life, yes. thing between my 11 and my 14 years old, okay. where I did running as a sport. Okay. And then I did average uh, between 2,000 and 3,000 kilometer a year. So I think there you I build created... up a lot of volume. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But if you look to my running, still a lot of room for improvements. Like I never worked with a running. I worked with a running coach that did my programming and everything, yes. but not really technique wise. Yeah, I still have room yeah, for yeah. improvement there. So I think I can still improve, but. Um, for a crossfitter, it's yeah, okay. yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Winning the, I think the seventh event at the, at the games was a 5k run. So I'm sure it's quite okay. Um, you you feel that the um, like the improved or the the the, uh, the gain in muscle mass hampers or makes it more difficult for you to do bodyweight exercises like running, for example, because you see this quite a lot uh, in crossfit athletes. They are so big, and it's maybe difficult for them to run. Yeah, it's no, uh, I already noticed that when I was younger because I was doing fitness at the time. I was doing judo, I was doing running. And when I got better in fitness, my running was getting worse because yes. I gained weight. Yes. And when I focused more on half marathon and everything, my strength went down. Yes. But then at that, at that point, I didn't know anything about CrossFit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's always finding a balance and you cannot specialize in something if you want to do everything. Yes. That's yes. also yes. the essence of CrossFit. Yes. You can yes. be good at everything, but not specialize yes. in exactly. something specific. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, there's, that's why I think um, CrossFit is so interesting also from a physiology point of view, because as a researcher myself, we have never really seen this. We have seen concurrent training. This is what's called like strength and endurance. Mm -hmm. like, like for example, rugby, but the, the overall goal was not to do the concurrent training. Yeah, yeah. It was just, yeah, you have to do strength as a rugby athlete to be big and to run and to, mm -hmm. to, to, to block people. But even this is not the, the pure goal for yeah. CrossFit. It's the only outcome is the performance in the concurrent yeah. training. And this is, I think, very interesting. And also from a physiology point of view, um, you see that we actually just uh, are, are publishing a study that you show, it shows that uh, exactly as you say, a CrossFit athletes endurance wise, maybe not you, but more typical uh, CrossFit athletes, they would be 30% um, less endurance wise compared to an elite cyclist, which is quite mm -hmm. a lot. So elite CrossFit compared to elite cyclist, 30% difference. Mm -hmm. Strength, it's much lower the differences, for yeah. example, between a weightlifter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pure, how high you can jump or how uh, much uh, leg press you have, yeah, it's yeah. 
why it's five to ten percent less it's less but okay. less less yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you feel this is kind of accurate or um yeah it's uh, hard to tell because yes, i don't know the data yes, yes. but um as you've seen with a lot of elite crossfit athletes we will not reach the top but we get really close yes and because yes. you have elite crossfit athletes who do world championships weightlifting yeah, yeah. But like you said, I never saw elite athletes doing a cycle cross. Or something. A they will be very cross. bad at it. It's no. funny. Yeah. Uh, compared, they will be good, but compared to an elite, and that's that was also interesting. For for example, we saw V2 max of uh, 55, low 60s of really good, good games athletes. Even mm -hmm. um, this was interesting for us. We thought it would be at least much higher, but it was yeah. best in the lab, like very controlled. So yeah. it's, uh, uh, while strength was, was, was interesting. I had uh, actually the same results, yes. Yes. average, and uh, the professor then yes. said like, it's impossible to have a high VOT max if you weigh 100 kilos, yes. because it's the weight is taken yes. into account. Yes. And there, I think there yes. the nuances, yes. because the high VOT max guys, they are 60 yes. kilos or something. It's, I think, you yes, it's true. But you have always accepted, for example, uh, cross country skiers. Yeah. They weigh, I don't think they weigh like you, but I think around uh, 9,500 kilos, they weigh 90 kilos, but they get to very, yeah. very high. So they're, but they have done endurance their whole life. So it's a bit mm -hmm. different, but yeah, I think the, the muscle mass uh, affects definitely. Um, could you guide us through a little bit on, on how you, uh, maybe first, do you still uh, work a normal job and do uh, CrossFit or did you shift completely or, or how does that work? I uh, built down yes. my uh, hours uh, yes. gradually. Okay. I have been working full time the first five or six years of my career. Yes. And then, as I said, I always look for improvements. I always evaluate every week, month, year, yes. what I, can I do better? Yes. And at a certain point, the I'm, time. Yeah, at a certain point in time was the issue. Um, in order to do good meal preps, I had need the time. In order to sleep well, I had my eight hours, but the eight hours were not sleep because I was rushing everything from work to the CrossFit box to home meal prepping, and then you're in your bed. Yeah, I have to I, sleep. I have to, I have sleep. to sleep. Yeah. So to dial in the the downtime yes. and having a really eight hours of sleep i yes. just lacked uh, time and in the beginning i went to 80 percent of work where yes. i cut my week in half yes. so i worked two days yes. i had one day off i had two days still and this was i saw a tremendous uh, change um, okay because in that one day i could do the meal preps i could do all the work outside of work yes I could catch up on sleep. Yes. Um, and there I saw already improvements. And after that one year, I said, maybe I should do crazy and I go to 60%. Yes. Which also, yeah, means other challenges because financially yeah, you course. earn 40% yes. less. Yes. But it was quite okay. And also my job, uh, Delaware. Yes. They supported that 100%. Yes. It was even one of they, the... They understand your situation, like they yeah, know yeah. you're really good at something. In the beginning, they didn't know what CrossFit was. Of but then when they got... Because I also wanted to get my professional work and my sportive yeah, yeah. work separate. Because I don't want to have yeah, any... I don't know. I don't know why, actually. Because yeah. it was actually better when they start to know the sport. They even bought uh, support crew t-shirts all my okay. colleagues the company itself they supported my journey to the games that's really nice so and it was even one of the partners that said um yeah like you're putting all the work into that sport why don't you take more time for the sport yes. because you can work your whole life and then you start thinking and then i was thinking like if the partners already said that because Obviously, you're scared that you lose your yeah, job. Of course. Because of course. if you say, yeah, I will come, but I will only work yeah, yeah. a little bit, not too much because... And then I was like, I talked to it with Zoe and my parents and they said, yeah, you should do it. And yeah, then I worked crazy. only 60% and then I saw I worked um, Monday on, Tuesday off, Wednesday on, uh, Thursday off, Friday on. Yeah. And then I got all the time to catch up on sleep, make meal preps, uh, yeah. have 
good warm-ups, cool-downs, time for mobility. And actually, that this was the year, um, last year. Yeah. And that was good. Actually, I think it was maintainable to do it for a longer period of time. But um, at the end of last year, I got <coughs> not scared, but you have like the feeling. What if I commit fully to it? Yes. What if next year is uh, less good than this year? Yeah, yeah. Maybe then I got uh, regrets yeah. that I didn't commit fully to it. And then I had again the chat with Zoe and my parents. And they said, yeah, you have to take the jump now. You're 28 years yeah, yeah. old. I don't have another 10 years to do it. Yeah. So no, it was more uh, the biggest risk I yeah. took. And still a pretty calculated risk, but uh, yeah, no, we're here. It's yeah. my uh, third week as okay. a pro athlete. That's really, really interesting. That's yeah. cool. That's why you also have some time for us to do some interviews. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that that's super cool. So you you talk about um, meal preps quite a lot. Um, do you also do you are you very strict in your diet? Do you try to um, match the calories because? As an elite athlete doing CrossFit, you expend a lot of calories, right? Is it for you rather hard to eat the calories or is it rather hard to cut down on the calories to keep the weight? It's uh, hard to get all the yes. calories in. <clears throat> now it's a bit easier because the first uh, three weeks. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and also Zoe helps a lot. She, when she cooks, it's, uh, her cooking skills are better than mine. Yeah, yeah. So when the taste is good, you eat more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's already a good uh, thing, um, but I'm not extremely strict. I don't measure the calories day by day because it's hard. I don't believe you spend the exact amount of calories the dietitian calculates. No, no. If I have of a harder workout, a longer it, it, workout, you can never know. You can never know. Never. So it's a bit that feeling. Um, okay, I have my fixed eating moments, but. Um, it's that feeling. If I'm yeah. done with eating, I will not push for a yeah, thousand yeah. calories more. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I have five eating moments and yes. I have different options at yes. that moment. And yeah. Seems, seems uh, logical and also uh, maintainable, which is very important. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Was, it reminds me of a, of a study that was done in the 60s where they checked um, different jobs that had different activity levels. So you have the sedentary people who just sat down uh, writing books and then more like bus drivers, uh, more and more active people into the end. Farmers, for example, were very active mm -hmm. in the 60s. And then they checked their caloric intake. And you saw that the sedentary people, they ate too much mm -hmm. just by feeling, obviously, because they didn't know anything about digestion. Yeah. And then the people, once you start doing some activity, they tune down the calories, so they maintained weight. Mm -hmm. And then the active people, like you, for example, or the, uh, the farmers, they ate much more calories because they also needed that. Yeah. So those active, two active groups or three active groups, they were actually maintaining their body weight, while the sedentary people, they could not really feel how much they, uh, they ate and they ate yeah. too much. And yeah, they ate weight, like yeah. it is happening a bit in society <clears throat> now. Yeah. Uh, and I guess if, if you're on that schedule, it seems... To work very well for you and uh, it's, uh, it's also complete. something i noticed uh, the first three weeks now the, as a pro athlete um it was not exactly the pro athlete schedule i wanted already because yeah. i made the schedule train eat, yeah, yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now we are renovating the the attic yeah. to have a recovery room and now it was train work five to six hours on the attic yeah. like placing the yeah, yeah. The jib rock, uh, I don't know the yeah, English yeah, yeah. word, and uh, oh, yeah, all nice the wood construction yeah. and uh, dragging all the concrete. Yes. So the activity activity level went up like crazy, and you also feel that in your eating. Yeah, yeah. Like your no normal eating schedule with a sedentary job as yeah. an IT consultant. Yes. Yeah. I know I ate like two, three plates at noon because you, you needed it. I needed it. Yeah, yeah. I spent like. My strain last three days, uh, last three weeks were like the same as during the games. That's funny. Because uh, it, it's also relative yeah, to yeah, what yeah. you're used to. Yeah, yeah. But it went from two trainings a day and sitting between yeah. to two trainings a day and six moving. hours of moving. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My heart rate was all the time in zone two. <laughs> 
because it's at the yes. second level yes, you have to go up down up down like thousands of times yeah people forget that actually the most important calories or energy expenditure to let's say lose weight or to maintain body weight is maybe not even in the gym it's what you mm. do in between the gym if you always yeah. uh, take your car everywhere and you don't uh, move yeah. or walk uh, those 500 calories you expend 400 calories in a crossfit workout 60 60 minutes no. That's probably not sufficient. You need to have an active lifestyle uh, to, yeah, yeah to, to, to facilitate this uh, for sure. Good. So um, related to maybe some, some changing slightly direction, one of the, the last, last questions is uh, the, mental, the mental side. So how, how does that work? Take, take me to, for example, the games. Um, you're there as a rookie. Um, you, you've probably seen all the legends there. Probably you looked up to them. Is this... Um, as a humble Belgian guy, difficult for you? Or, I mean, you did very well, so you must have done something good there. Um, how did uh, that go? <laughs> Americans, it's all much bigger than here, so. Yeah, it's funny, but I felt very well prepared with uh, Andre, he also gave yes. a lot of tips. And I have a lot of respect for all the games athletes because they are one of the reasons that I do the things that yes. I do now because yes. I wanted to be one of them but once there I never showed it I never asked by example for a picture with them yeah, because yeah, yeah. I see them as my competitors yeah, and I don't see them as the gods although a couple of years ago I thought it would be impossible and now I'm there as well but if you think you're there above you you yeah, cannot you're beat gonna, them you cannot so beat them. that's how I tackled it and also Andre guided me well and preparing everything like every workout i prepare the back with clothes i prepare the back with um, pre-event food post-event yeah. food um, all the food was dialed in and if you don't have to take all the decisions at the moment it takes a lot of stress off your plate yes. it's just like for me it's even hard to remember the games because yes. it's like automatic you're a robot you automatic pilot yeah yeah and uh, also i can become very stoic like you're in a big stadium if there were no pictures or videos of it i would not remember it yeah. because i'm so focused on yeah, yeah. my lane and the, the lane yeah exactly that's uh, crazy yeah yeah and i think this is a big advantage to have yeah. as a rookie yeah, if you get lost in the in the media and uh, yeah i think it will in impact your yeah, performance yeah yeah, yeah. It's for sure uh, talk uh, talk about um andre so andre hude is now your coach i think one year approximately yeah, exactly um, one year i think it's uh, a pity for many people that he went away from the athlete side because he's an unbelievable athlete and yeah. i also looked up to him as a european and then he announced teams and then coaching of course uh, it's, it's 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 very good that he does this, but it's still a pity because he was a great athlete and still mm -hmm. pretty young, I think. Yeah. Um, so he he writes your training scheme. He uh, yeah, you have contact with him uh, or, yeah. or how work. <clears throat> he has oh, four and five athletes. He coaches individual, yes. and I am one of them. Yes. Um, I started with no shortcuts exactly this period, like between yeah. holidays um, last year but just to check the program because I was not sure where I wanted to go to. <clears throat> and then he reached out, he sent a message like, hi Ella, welcome to the program, what are your goals? And at that point, I have even never been to the semifinals. So I said, hi Andre, uh, I will be honest, I, my goal is to make it to the games. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think one or two days later, he replied and he said, um, yeah, um, follow the program let's let me know what you think about it and uh, that's what i did i followed one block of the general programming yes. which is already um very detailed there's always a he calls it a block explanation video yeah, yeah. where he talks 15 minutes about what you can expect and what you will be doing and for me knowing what you do or why you do it yeah. It's very important because I'm a very analytical athlete okay. and I want to know what I'm doing. Yes. And uh, then I yeah, uh, handed over my feedback to Andre. I said, I like the structure, I like the way you work, but I want more um, emphasis on my weaknesses because I don't need to run three times a week when I 
cannot do X amount of handstand push-ups. I of want course. to do five times a week handstand push-ups. Yes. And uh, then he said, yeah, let's jump on a call. Let's see what we can do. And then he uh, yeah, proposed to coach me individually. And yeah. Yeah, for me, it was it a no-brainer because, like you said, it was and is still an amazing athlete yeah. who is very fit, who moves well, which yeah, I respect unbelievably well. uh, very much. And he's very smart and he is like completely in line with the athlete I am. Yeah. He's like, structured. Uh, yeah, structured yeah. and yeah, for me, uh, I'm still happy with the choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I wish you all the best. We're all rooting for you the, in the games, hopefully 2024. Uh, tell tell the viewers and the listeners how they can find you, reach you, uh, yeah, find you on the social media to follow you, support you. Yeah. Just uh, Jelle Hoste. It's a not rocket science name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there I post the most about on Instagram? my journey. Yeah, yes. on Instagram. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> until the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.